Hello everyone, you know, um, I'm a big fan of the standard Linux text editor called ED and recently I've implemented one in Go programming language. Uh, and that was done for purpose actually, so I wanted to have a solid backend uh, powered by the command language, the exact one that is used within the GNU ED. And then uh, I wanted to connect that to the visual interface of a full screen editor, something that you uh, got used to nowadays, like the modern standard, really. So, what if we could like bundle these two pieces together, like the visual uh, editor as the front end and the GNU EZ command language as the back end? So, since I already had the EZ command language and the editor, the actual editor has also already been implemented. The only thing left to achieve uh, this uh, goal of bundling these two together. Uh, so the only thing preventing me from doing this was actually to like, uh, take the code that I've written uh, earlier. I uh, had the text editor called Ego and I made a series here on YouTube like how to create one. Uh, check that out if you're interested. So I took that visual interface and connected that with the GNU ED uh, command set, command language. So this video I'd like to demonstrate what kind of result I came up with eventually. So let me uh, go to the project folder, right, so here are the source files and uh, let's build the project so I can say build and uh, run Vichy. I call it Vichy. Vichy stands for visual interface command input. So from the visual interface perspective, if you press E and go to the edit mode, you can just do text editing, simple, straightforward. So like whatever you would be expecting from the regular text editor, nothing special really. So this is always really clear. Uh, I have some shortcuts for easy commands like to delete lines. Also you can do copy paste and I will now demonstrate this. Right, so, uh, but what is really interesting about this sort of a thing is the following. So, uh, I say, uh, Colin to go into the command mode, just like Vim does. It's really like, uh, sort of inspired by Vim at some point. And here, um, I can do the following thing. So let's say I say C to change. Okay. And now I can input the lines, uh, by simply, uh, of uh, entering commands, well, it's not commands really, I, I am within the territory of the change command now. So, a uh, single period to end, to end the execution, to end the uh, insertion of the text. So, I can say like one to go to line number one, uh, let's say uh, dollar sign to go to the very last line, right? Um, I can, let's say line number three, I want to delete. And I just get that one deleted. I can delete, say, from three to five, right? Three to five, uh, delete like this. Or I can say uh, duplicate things. So let's say I want to say three to six. Uh, T stands for duplicate or transfer. So after the line six, so it's just paste things in. Uh, yeah, probably let me show how this is going to work with the uh, sort of real uh, source file. Yeah, probably that is going to be a little bit more interesting. So I can say E for Reddit, stands for Reddit. Uh, and well, let's start with vichy.go. Uh, right, so if, I, if I'm if i not with the command mode, well, obviously I can do the navigation just like the normal text editor does, and I can do editing just like within the normal text editor, that's all. Uh, pretty self explanatory nothing really special so far. But, uh, yeah, let's get back to the command mode. So here, um, for instance, the current line is now highlighted. The current line is the line number six. So uh, dot brings me to the current line, but I can try to type an expression. So current line plus five, for instance, it just jumps five uh, uh, spaces, like five lines downwards as well as I can say current minus five, it jumps five to the top. So again, like the first line, the very last line, uh, I can use regular expressions for search. So for instance, if I want to search for all the function calls, I can provide the following uh, regular expressions. So starting from the blank character, 
uh, I want to match the lowercase letters multiplied uh, like occurring uh, several times and the parenthesis escaping the parenthesis character and hit enter so this is the first occurrence it's a function main the second occurrence the third one len right do read again 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 so wherever it goes have the next one I can say uh, skip through several occurrences like this which also works uh, same pattern matching can be used for substitution substitution uh, works globally by default so for instance um, let me just you know just want to skip from here uh, I can simply say edit and let's go to commands.go so here for instance um, just want to give you an idea so uh, I have many functions here right so function 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 so for instance I want to change this func to function uh, I can do the following way I can say s func and function and by default this works globally and you see like all the funks has been replaced with functions uh, well probably it's easier to search this way so function 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 right so we if I do not want to do this globally I can say for instance just for this particular lane number 143 uh, so say 143 substitute and function with func here we go and now if I search for function again so those are still there and as well as the func func now is the only occurrence uh, well actually it matches the entire function because um, yeah. Uh, yeah because that's the part essentially but anyway yeah here is the func here is the original one uh, I could have say like uh, func and the space like this in this case this is the only occurrence but uh, without the space at the end just uh, matches uh, all those there as well so I can fix it back by saying like all the function uh, substitute back to the func like this and now say yeah, func and here we go let's say I want to do some copy pasting um, I just find some function to duplicate so I'm on a small uh, well maybe not in this file I just want to open the uh, let's go to the buffer right so yeah for instance this one set buff the tiny little function here so uh, let me demonstrate starting from how to move one function uh, somewhere else so let's say from 8 to 13 I want to move here so from 8 to 13 move to 28 and ban here we go so it's no longer here it's now here we can just quickly fix the extra spaces like this and add the new line in here uh, you can also add the new line using the command and in this case just say n and adds the new line right and join uh, joins back to the previous line like this like this like this like this let's say I want to have this function being written to a separate fault this can be easily done the following way so I can simply say from 8 to 13 I want to write and call the fault set buff dot go right and now if I escape from here then suddenly we have this set buff dot go so cat set buff go we have our file and now again the chi buffer so say I don't have this one in here but I want to read the source code from the file to embed into the current document in this case I can simply say the following way so I can say read and set buff dot go and it just reads um, 
right where the current line was. So obviously we can also copy paste, so for instance if I just say from 8 to 13 I want to yank and then let's say 14 paste or put and then let's say 20 again put so I can put as many times as I want or I can also just go somewhere and use the shortcut say P and I paste the block of text exactly where I need that to have and again if I delete the block of text so say from 50 to well let's just better try this one so from 42 to 49 42 49 if I just delete the block of text like this then again uh, it's not just deleted it's actually being cut to the buffer and if I say P I can paste this block wherever I want so it's quite handy it's really similar to what Vim does, but in a way more simplified way, I would say. Also, as you can see here, I have some rudimentary syntax highlighting. So let me just demonstrate how this is actually implemented. So if I go to highlight tab go, uh, well, essentially I've created a simple lexer here. Well, that's the universal general purpose lexer that literally just distinguishes between the numbers, uh, strings, um, just the regular words, the keywords, and also responsible for highlighting the current line and the cursor, right? Uh, anyway, so let me just quickly show. So here is the main routine for syntax highlighting. So essentially what I do here is um, I just do match if uh, the current if the current character within the line is a uh, digit. In this case, I want to highlight this with a bold yellow color, right? Otherwise, this might be a space, so just uh, skip in the blanks and whatever uh, number of uh, blank characters av is available there has been returned and printed without any highlights. Then it might be the uh, double quote. In this case, we are dealing with strains. So strain is like being um, highlighted with yellow. And if I use the single quotes, highlighted with bright yellow. Well, my terminal doesn't really show the difference, but yeah, there is one. Okay. Apart from this, I also do match the commentary, so I can use the Python style commentaries to command out the line like this, or I can also use the C or Go style, or I can also use the uh, commentaries like this, which also works quite nicely. Right, finally, the keywords. So it might happen that we do match the keyword and the keywords is just a list of strings so in case if we do match the keyword we highlight it with the green color if not we just leave it as is so uh, let's have a look at the global definitions and the keywords in particular so I'm sort of using the keywords for those languages I code in which are Python and Go, essentially, uh, maybe some JavaScript as well. So just a basic set of keywords. I would probably be appending the keywords if I need more, but for now this seems like fairly enough. So generally, uh, let's uh, see how many lines we have within the entire project. So if I just see the, all the Go files, so 1228 lines of code for the entire editor so again like uh this is the standard linux text editor command set on the one hand is the back end and the visual interface on the other that's by the way uh how the vim uh well not the vim but vi was uh eventually born like back in the day bill joy enhanced the ad text editor and created his own version with extended commands called X and then he has provided the visual interface for his X and that's how the VI was actually born and then 
uh, it was improved even more when the Vim project had started many years ago. So what I do here is quite similar. It might seem like reinventing the wheel, but if your goal is to learn how wheels are actually working, in that case, reinventing one might not be that bad idea. Also, this text editor is cross-platform, so you can also run it on Windows, which is our tiny little bonus here. So I'll give you a link in the description down below the video so that you could give it a try. This is it from my side. Thanks for watching. See you later and cheers.